Hey yeah, people, it's me King, welcome back to King's Pet channel. Today we will discuss yet another job class build, the wizard. In this video, first we will look into the state point distribution, second the skill set, and the last one the equipment. Without wasting any time, let's dive in. Alright, first the state point distribution. This goes without saying, for wizard, the state point will be allocated all to the INT state. INT is our main source for magical attack. The more INT we have, the more magical attack we get. Now, wizard depends on skills to deal damage. Wizard skills in general have a long skill cooldown. The dex state is actually will benefit us to reduce the skill cooldown. Adding dex will give us more vigor state. Having more bigger state will reduce more the skill cooldown. However, we will focus on adding all the stat points in INT state. We will increase our bigger state at our equipment. We will discuss more about that later on the equipment. Alright, next is the skill set. Now, most famous frequent asked question for wizard is which type of wizard is better? Should I go for the Ice Wizard or the Fire Wizard? Well, the Wizard skill set actually have more elements than just Ice and Fire. Other than Ice and Fire, the Wizard also has Lightning, Earth, and Ghost element skill. So instead of choosing side, we will talk about which skills combination are better, which skills are feasible at your current level for in general purpose either for farming EXP, MVP hunt, or PvP. Okay, we will start from the first job skill. In the early game, we do not have area of effect AOE damage skill other than this one, the fireball skill. Increasing the skill level will have a long cooldown, so it is not efficient to use for farming EXP. The other skills are all single target damage skill. We have Heaven's Drive skill for single target earth damage. We have Soul Strike skill for single target ghost damage. We have Magic Crusher skill for single target neutral damage. And Firebolt, Lightning Bolt, and Cold Bolt skill for single target fire, wind, and water damage respectively. Now, all these single target skills do not have skill cooldown, but they have channeling time. Except for Magic Crusher skill. This one is the opposite. It has skill cooldown, but not channeling time. The skill that will help us tremendously in the early game is the Soul Strike skill. Now to up this skill, it will depends on your vigor state. For example, the skill has 1 second variable channeling time. My vigor state can reduce the channeling time by 1 second. So now we have 0 variable channeling time. Increase the skill level further. We do not want the skill variable channeling time to have more than our vigor state can reduce. So when the variable channeling time is over than our variable CT, go back one level so that we can have zero variable channeling time. Now, Cold Bolt, Lightning Bolt, Fire Bolt and Heaven's Drive skill at max level has a whopping 600% attack damage, but will have a long channeling time. In the early game, even at skill level 1, the vigor is not high enough to get the skill to zero channeling time. It is really not efficient to use. So it comes to these two skills, Magic Crusher and Soul Strike skill. Now, Magic Crusher have fixed skill cooldown 3 seconds, whereas the Soul Strike skill have fixed channeling time 0.2 seconds. So the Soul Strike skill can be used more often. In fact, using this skill is like shooting an arrow. It's super fast and deal more damage. Let me demonstrate it to you real quick. Next, we need the Firewall skill. And this skill can build a fire barrier around you. The monster who got near to it will be knocked back, so they can't get near you. With this skill, you can even hit monsters that have level higher than you. Next, the Zen Passive skill. This skill can increase your SP regen. 
However, most of the time, even at max level, the SP region can keep up with the SP consumption from using skills. I will still be using the blue potion when leave it AFK for EXP farming. So for restoring SP, it is better to just use the blue potion. We can use the skill point to up other skills. Now usually, these single target damage skills are more suitable to be used for MVP hunt. With high damage, you can give the final blow and snatch the MVP title if releasing the skill at the right timing. However, players have expressed that they can't get the MVP title with single target damage skill. Instead, most of the time, they got the MVP title more frequently when using the continuous AoE damage skill. Just some perspective that I want to share with you. Alright, that's it for first job skill. Next, move on to the second job skill. Now, we finally get more area of effect AoE damage skill as second job. The AoE damage skills are the Storm Gas skill, Lord of the Million, and Napalm Beat skill. Now, Napalm Beat skill have a rather high variable skill cooldown even at level 1. My biggest stat at the moment is not enough to reduce it to 0. So unless you have enough vigor to reduce the skill cooldown to 0, using it with few seconds cooldown will not be efficient. To use Storm Gas skill, first you need to up the skill level before it. So up the Cold Bolt and the Frost Diver skill to level 5. To use the Lord of the Million skill, first we need to up the Jupiter Thunder skill to level 5. Similarly, increasing the Storm Gust and Lord of the Million skill will depend on your Vigor state. We want to use the skill with 0 cooldown. Fire Pillar and Kindle skill is a fire element skill. This skill is a preparation skill for the Meteor Storm skill that you can use at advanced second job. Not to mention, this skill is a single target skill, so we will not be using this skill as much. Next, Soul Drain skill. This skill adds extra magical damage based on your SP. Now, adding extra magical attack is always a good idea, so put it to one point is enough. You can consider to up Energy Code skill for extra physical defense. Frost Nova skill has chances to freeze the target in the skill area of damage. Once frozen, the target armor attribute will be changed to Water Element. This skill is suitable to be paired with the Wind Element skill, Jupiter Thunder and Lord of Vermilion skill. Once the target armor changed to Water Element, the Wind Element skill will deal more damage to the Water Element. The side skill is fire damage AOE skill and will reveal the nearby hiding units. At the same time, it will knock back and stun the target. However, these two skills have a rather long cooldown. So if you want to use it, you can put one point to the skill. That being said, most of the time, we will only use the Storm Gust and Lord of Vermilion skill. These skill combos give birth to a new name to the wizard what the players call the Ice Lightning Wizard. The skill can be released continuously and is pretty to watch. Let me give you a demonstration. So much beautiful. Now, did you notice that there are not much fire element skill that will be used for second job skill? That's because the most powerful fire element skill will be available at advanced second job change, the Meteor Storm skill. At second job change, we can get more of element skills too. The skill that worth mentioning is the Abyssal Swarm skill. This skill can reduce the movement and attack speed of the target in the area of damage at the same time has the chance to change the armor attribute to earth element. This complements very well if paired with the fire element skill. The fire element skill can deal more damage to the earth element. 
Now, this skill combos grant another name to that wizard, what the players call the Earth Fire Wizard. So when players ask which type to choose, is it the Ice Wizard or the Fire Wizard, there's no such thing in ROX. It's the Ice Lightning Wizard or the Earth Fire Wizard. That's what the players in Taiwan server refers to anyway. Okay, so that's it for skill set. Let's move on to the equipment. First, let's look at the weapon. Another famous frequent asked questions. What weapon to use for wizard? The two hand rod or the one hand rod with shield? Now wizard skills in general have a long skill cooldown, up to 30 seconds, which means you need more than 2000 vigor stat to reduce the skill cooldown. With that in mind, the second hand rod which have the vigor state can help us to reach higher vigor state. Next, the accessories and talisman. Similarly, we will want to use the accessories and talisman which have the vigor state as well. After you have enough vigor state, you will want to change the accessories and the talisman to have more state for magic damage bonus. That would be the level 50 accessories or the level 60 accessories and the level 60 talisman. Both gear will have the magic damage bonus state. Now for the enchantment, we will focus on the INT state for more magic attack or dex for more vigor state. As for the card, there are a lot of card combinations you can slot like slotting 3 element card, the arc clouds card at the weapon for extra water and wind damage, and cards that increase final magic damage for accessories and talisman. Of course, slotting cards that have state for vigor is also a good idea. Alright, that's it for wizard build. I hope this video helps you on your wizard build. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, happy playing. Bye-bye.